You guys, I'm so excited. Nikki and Brie Garcia are here today. Yeah. Formerly known as the Bella Twins. Yeah. Formally. 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 FKA. Yes. <laughs> you know what that was yeah. a thing? So let's talk about that, first of all, because yeah. that's a huge change that happened pretty recently for people that that didn't know. Yeah. That you now go by your by right. your actual last the name. The roots. The roots. Yeah. It's been, well, and it's crazy because it is still so new and it's it still difficult because even at times I'll be on calls and I'm like, yeah, just tell them the Bellas are coming. I'm like, I mean, the Garcias, the Garcias, yeah. not the Bellas, because that's what we were almost the past 20 years. And, um, well, 16 three, years. Well, 16. Okay. Almost 20. Look, I, I'm glad <laughs> yeah, that we you rounded, you rounded yeah, yeah, yeah. up, but it just felt real high. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, for Brie and I, um, it was like, so a year before a contract was coming up, we just knew that like we wanted to walk away and that we were kind of done with this chapter in our life. But the one thing we knew is like, wait, if we leave WWE, we're going to lose our name. And we had to really do the work for like a year before our contract was coming up and we had to make that decision. Like, wait, do we just stay because we are the Bella Twins and like we've created this career and this empire around that? Or do we walk away from it all? And as we enter this new amazing chapter in our lives, we just go in as the Garcia Twins and who we were before the Bellas. Right. And so we had to work with a life coach, like literally with this mm -hmm. to like really Because it's an identity it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not only to the world, but like to who you are. Right. Yes. And we have this incredible Bella army. Like we literally have this insane fandom worldwide because WD is 147 countries. So, and it became very, into, our relationship with them was so intimate and strong and a lot of inspiration, motivation. So for us, we even thought about them, like. How are they going to feel like yeah. they can't be called the Bella Army anymore? And we were thinking about all these things. And it took us a year to really process Did you process think of that. other names? Or did you know, like, if you're going to something, you're going back to We the did go, should we go by our married names? I was thinking that. that yeah. was, but, like, that yours a is a really hard one. And that's yeah. what everyone said. They go, well, Nikki. How do you say it? Can you pronounce it? Yeah, Chig Vinciv. Okay. I always kind of have to put Yeah, you put a lot of head <laughs> movement. Chig Vinciv. <laughs> but then we thought, like, but then do people just call us the twins? Like, Nikki right. and Brie the twins? Yeah. Her and I were like, it's hard when people like to, I mean, we're twins, which is rare in entertainment. There's only so many twins. So that's a special thing. So we were like, we do need someone to be like the something twins. Yeah. And I can't be Danielson Chigvinsev twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> that, That'd be weird. But did you guys change your, your last names to your husband's? Cause on yes. Instagram, I saw that you added it. Yes, I added it, but I haven't legally done it yet because, and it's not even like, I just, she told me, she goes, do you think you're going to get it all done within a year? And I'm like, I will. And I Did haven't. you legally change yours? I did. She has. No, but I told you the website that really helped. Hitch, I hitch know. something. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I got it like done within a week. Yeah. Because trust me. But I feel me, like most people, like don't yeah. be, like most people just change it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, know? I like agree. Most people it's so don't much change now. all their social security and their credit cards. It's insane. Too much paperwork. Because you have to go to the DMV and then you have to like call social security and you have to call birth certificate. That's you have crazy. to do all the things. Yeah. My and I did it all. legally. His chicken right. sieve. So I think because he is, I'm not in a rush. Right. You know? But also, do you have those moments where you're like, I want to be what he is? Yes. Yeah. Because we were somewhere and they came up to my husband and they go, hi, um, Mr. Garcia. Mr. They called who? Artem. Oh. And Artem goes, <laughs> and but because I checked in with my last name. He goes, you know, when are you going to be Chick Vincive? So they just call us all the same thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. true. When I call my son's doctor and I'm like, I'm Amanda Hirsch and he's Noah Weiss. And it's like, yeah, you just want to like be the same. Be the same. So you knew that if you're choosing a name to go by the twins, it was going to be Garcia. Yeah. But then you had to like work on it with a life coach and get comfortable with this yeah. new. Well, her and I said, if we're not going to go by our married last names, we got to go back to our roots, which every, everyone knew us before wrestling as the Garcia twins. And we we're kind of proud of that because her and I, you know, we are we're Mexican Italian, very proud Latinas. And so we're like, it is cool to go back to Garcia. Yeah. Like kind of where it started, you right. know? No, it's true. Um, but yeah, so we did the work and that's what we settled on. And it's... Um, How's that transition though? Like between letting go of that name and... So it's been a tough transition. Yeah. It's, it's been, there's been a lot harder of positives. Than I and I was shocked about that. But you know what's the hard part for me when it's been, it's hard for people to understand because... Majority of people in entertainment, it's not WWE entertainment. Like when you're thinking of Hollywood, they come in and they have their name. Like they a legally own it. And a lot of times it. a stage name too. It's like a, a stage name. Yeah. Right. But like they own it. So like 
they don't ever have to change that or worry about it. We didn't own the Bella Twins. And so it's hard to tell people like, oh, well, so that's an IP for WWE and you, you go into the whole thing and they're like, no, but you're the Bella Twins. Like, what are you talking about? And so that's been the hard thing because then for people too, it's hard for them to understand then, but wait, if you're going to lose the name, then why didn't you stay? You know, like, at that point, when you, it. when you left though, you weren't wrestling anymore. Right. right. You were just like ambassadors. So yeah. what was your role at that point? You have to make, like, when you're an ambassador, you have to make up to, like, 12 appearances a year. So whether they're at pay-per-views or charity event or whatever they might be having, yeah. um, that's, like, kind of what you're supposed to do. But when you're using their name, so Bree and I are, like, one of the women that, you know, transitioned and broke into Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of first for them that when we're doing all these other shows – because they own our name, we have to ask for permission. Uh -huh. And then they have the ownership. And that was just, it was becoming a different world. And I think too, it was a world they weren't experienced in because there was only like The Rock and John Cena for them. And now here are these girls that broke into Hollywood and they're like, wait, now there's divas and Bellas and now they're hosting Barmageddon and Twin Love. And, and it was all these contract talks. And that became very difficult. So when we're about to be 40 and we're moms and we haven't wrestled in three years, it was like, okay, as we're entering this new chapter and this contract's coming to an end, yeah. we just kind of take ownership of ourselves. Yeah. Because it's hard, too, when you're in that world that's just wrestling driven and they're so focused on the talent in the ring, which they should be. Um, it was hard for us to continue to grow in the space we wanted. You know, it's hard to, like, tell a wrestling coach, like, hey, I'm doing this mom thing, and I just kind of want to mom it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their focus is, like, but there's a pay-per-view you could be a guest in, and <laughs> rah, you know? So mm -hmm. it's tough. But it would be like, smart of them to lean in because think about, like, Peloton, right? Right. All these instructors come on. They get mega famous. Yeah. They do other things. They're writing books. They're doing all these things, like, WWE should catch on to what's happening and be like, we're, you know, we're helping make people into these like powerhouses. Yeah. So, and become a brand and all these things, which is, which is such a positive, but right. for people that don't get in, aren't, aren't reading between the lines. There is a logistic aspect here, which yeah. is you left the WWE. You're not going to use the name that they kind of, did they come up with it for you? No, no we, we did. did. You did. They Our, just own the IP. Mm. So it's like. We came up we when, don't. yeah, when we made it to TV, they were like, and even when we sent our contract, we're like, so we don't like people using their real names. Um, so instead of being called the Garcia Twins, what do you want to be called? And we we're like, oh, well, our grandfather, full blood Italian, you know, would always call us Bella. So why don't we be the Bella Twins? Like, you know, not yeah. a, our pop up who like helped raise us, an amazing man. And he had passed away like not even a year before we had signed that contract. So we just wanted to kind of do that for him. And then you just sign it over. Yeah. Did you, because you mentioned that John Cena, who was your partner, yeah. right? And also The Rock kind of transitioned. Did you guys consult with them or ask them for advice while, like, making this transition? No, we should No, have. we should have. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, help call us call out. Hey, Dwayne. Yeah, because I still call you The Rock, yeah. so let us know how that oh, yeah, deal works. true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... I so think, you don't know what happened there? Well, I think it's different for men than women, hmm. you know. So there was never even a conversation. I think a lot of us actually, we thought, oh, maybe there'll be a conversation because we have such a huge brand and we were actually making WWE a lot of money. So we actually thought there was going to be a conversation of like, okay, if you guys aren't resigning, let's talk about the name. Maybe when you do future projects, we take a percentage, yeah. you put the name. There was we, no conversation. I'll be honest. I got a lawyer letter four hours before my contract was ending, and they were seizing it all. So, and I keep that letter in my office so I could always see it and just know that as I enter this new chapter, that it's like I get to see what wasn't even talked about of something I built for 20 years, but know that I have the power as a woman to build something else for the next 20 years. Yeah. So, and it was upsetting because we were attached, but also I get it business. Like, hey, this is our platform, and I get it. Like, I'm very understanding in that way of like that, that, that is their IP. Yeah. But we would have continued to have built that, you know? If, yeah. If like there help was a me, talk. Like hand washes yeah. the hand. But, yeah. Like, but we were prepped for it. So during that year prep, that actually helped when that happened because I was prepared to be Nikki Garcia that Saturday morning mm -hmm. that, you know, did you guys have like a party, like a name change party or something? We did. We actually you did. did? We popped a bottle of Opus One. We did. You know, <laughs> it, it's funny because I, I feel like it was, there was a double, like 
it was a weird feeling. It was very bittersweet. Oh, of course. You know, we're like, attached to it. Yeah. yeah, we were attached to the Bella twins. And so we were sad to see that go, but we were like, this new freedom and this new chapter. It did. It's exciting. Really damn good. Scary, but exciting. And I think that's what we celebrated more was just like, what's next? Yeah. Like, now the world is our oyster. We can do whatever the F and we And it's want. just a name. It just really, a name. And at the end Honestly, of the day, it's it just is. a name. Yeah. 100%. Like, my name is not skinny enough out. What a dumb fucking name <laughs> that I'm stuck with, you know? I'll talk to you when I want to rebrand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ask you how you yeah. do that. Wait, John Cena doesn't have a WWE name. So before Brie and I, the year we signed, which 2007, right? Or six, something like that. So... That year is when Vince started to be like, wait, I don't want people to have their real names anymore. Uh, so we came in the first year where we we were lucky enough because we got to keep our first names. They were just changing last names. For talent now, they fully change your name. Like they don't want any part of your birth certificate, a part of your stage name. Mm. Um, so we were just happened to be that first year where they're like, let's at least start to get rid of last names. <laughs> you, though, were born Stephanie. Yeah, my parents, you know, they were barely 19, so they call me Stephanie Nicole, mm -hmm. but my mom's like, but I like Nicole, and I don't want Stephanie, so fine, we'll name her Stephanie Nicole, but we'll always call her Nicole, and so my whole life. <laughs> oh, so it was never Stephanie, yeah. really? No. So names have and always then, been confusing. Yeah, yeah, you guys. People will always come to go with a million names, yeah, and then there was like, when I started playing soccer, there was Nicole on the team, so my mom and me was like, oh, just call her Stephanie, and I was like fifth grade like wait what so soccer people called me stephanie school people call me nicole wrestling people call me nikki i go by all three i respond to all three and i call her all three of them no you don't like it do. different, like you're mad at her you're like stephanie yeah. no when i'm mad at her it's nicole you're mad nicole at nicole that makes sense and, and then but stephanie like, when i'm around all our soccer friends or like people from oh, the world i can friends yeah. oh yes what oh, i can yeah. easily go back to like wait when stuff when did you when did you stop playing um, so oh, I, second year in college for me, um, I mean, it's crazy to think, but I was 20, so almost 40, so 20 years ago, but we all still talk and my competitive amazing. soccer girls, we all played together for 11 years straight. So, and you're both around. of you like the same level at soccer? I mean, I was a little bit yes. better. <laughs> yes. I'd love to see you play center mid. Oh, oh, you had gosh. different roles okay, on, the, yes. on the field. I like don't know the, the name. She wish she had. So my she wish she had my rights. You wish. I won all the awards. I did win awards though. Yeah, but I won the ones that were ranked a little higher. Okay, look, I like to mess with her. Yeah, but she was such a good player, and this girl has endurance like I've never seen. Like she, so she's the energizer bunny. Honestly, I'm trying to think like who I would be more scared of in the rank. I think Bree. Yeah, yeah. Bree's. Like, I feel like her look is. Like I'm a silent yeah. killer. Yeah, yeah. She has, she's she has like no a art. she's a chihuahua. That's what I used to say. She's like scrappy. Chihuahuas aren't like, scary. Oh really? Have you seen a chihuahua get They're like, loud? So well, no. If you're like saying a, a chihuahua, wolf. you're saying she's loud, but she's harmless. Oh well, then I feel like I'm a wolf. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> no. Thing comes up. I see that. You can't even huh. hear me. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I see yeah. that. And also, <laughs> Bree was the one to introduce you to WWE. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get turned on to it? I saw that they were on a search for women wrestlers. So I don't, did you ever watch Glow on Netflix? Glow. That's you know, the newest show though. Yeah. 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 But so what, if you saw, you saw how like all of a sudden there was like a thing like. But the actual Glow came out in the 80s. Yeah. Right? 80s, but they were like on a search for women wrestlers and you kind of were just like, shit, I want to go try this. So when I saw it. you were it, familiar with it because of Hooters. Hooters. Yes. We were Hooter girls. We so watched we, the pay-per-views. Yeah. And I, I thought it was amazing what the women were doing. But when I heard about this um, diva search. I was kind of like, this sounds really cool. And I was telling Nicole about it and she was like, well, that's interesting. Cause she wanted to go play uh pro ball in Italy. So I was literally training to go do that. Cause I was just playing at Grossmont college and which was community because before I was going to play for ASU broke my leg in half before signing. And at the time the women's pro league was up. So I was going to play for the Arizona heat wave. Then the women's league folded for, I mean, gosh, up until a few years ago. Right. Yeah. But so the women's league folded at that time for me in 2002. And I just kind of was lost at that point. So we moved to San Diego and I was going to school at Grossmont and the head coach there knew me, knew my reputation. He goes, why don't you just walk on, like, come back and do this. And I was like, okay, but the girls are younger and I'm older. Like, I don't know how that'll be. And he's like, just come try. And then we went to state, we won. It was incredible. And then he was like, look, the women's league is up in Italy. Like you're Italian. 
let's get you there and play. And he had the connections there. So I started training. And then she came to me oh about God. the diva yeah. search. My first actual audition, um, when I, I went, I was by myself. And they're like, what's something special about you? And I said, I have a twin sister. And they were like, what? And I'm like, an identical twin. And they're like, you have to bring her. And so I convinced her. And I'll never forget, it was at the Four Seasons in Marina Del Rey. Oh, and gosh. her and I, I'm like, we're going to fight. And all she literally this. came to me and goes, so we're going to go wrestle some girls. Yeah. No, this yeah. is what I'm thinking Where in my head. Where did your confidence come from that you were going to like do this thing? I don't know. Maybe being Since like. Been young. With my dad. <laughs> yeah. My dad Scorpio. would make us like, yes, yeah, Scorpio. Like you're athletic though. No, you're also we are. very athletic. athletic. Very athletic. Yeah. And we've been tomboys our whole life. Yeah. Like, and we are little fighters. Like we stuck up for ourselves. We didn't let like the sen seniors initiate us when we were freshmen in high school. Yeah, we stood like, our no. ground and our dad raised us very much that like way tough, tough very tough so you were like come i need i need a side yeah kick. and so we had ponytails and we had our kicks on like athletic Wife clothes meters, like so we show up and we like see this line what looks like go-go dancers and we're like i literally looked at her and i go what did you get me into? and i'm like this can't be it <laughs> and sure enough it was and it was really crazy because i was like gosh i you know you say female wrestlers and i was thinking different and um so what did you have to do dance no, they like asked like a best body contest. Like you have to get in bikinis. So I remember we had to bring stuff back the next day. They like kind of pulled us aside and they're like, "So you need to have a sexy outfit. You need to have a bikini." And even when you see you us came in with our like so <laughs> yeah. you came with like no, yeah. we got shirts made. Mine said Breezy for Sheezy. Her said Nicole for Show. Yeah, it was the right and on our butt it no. said the Garcia <laughs> twins. No, and we had yeah. bandanas on. We were like, "Let's go." Let's Wait, how it. old were you at the time? 20, 21. 20. 21. Oh, yeah, you know, you're and right, you were 21. living in California at that point, yes, by yourselves. Or yeah, did the yeah. family come? No, no, by ourselves. And so, our, no one knew, we didn't tell them that we were going to this. We didn't tell anyone. Wait, were you trying, but you both were in entertainment too. So, like, were yes. you like, I'm going soccer pro, or do I want to like be in Hollywood? Right. And so, I always loved entertainment. Like, since we've been super young, we are very drawn to old Hollywood, watch all the old Hollywood films, and we were big, like, I love Lucy fans and all that. Nick at Night was, like, our jam. Like, that was our thing. And so Bree and I were very drawn to all that. And so, Dynasty. Yeah. We would sneak and watch Dynasty. Yeah, we would because we weren't allowed to. <laughs> but so when she showed me wrestling, I was like, oh, my God, how cool is this? Like, they get to be characters, but they kick ass. And it was kind of both of my worlds that I loved, like, together. So I was like, this seems like, like my new chapter, like what I would like to do next. And... <laughs> So when we got there, I just wasn't thinking of, I was thinking characters, but I was not thinking of the sexiness part mm. of it. Just the best body part, which I felt like at that point, it was hard for me at first to think of that with sports. Um, and so even when you look at us in our bikini shots compared to everyone else, like plain, very no makeup sportsy. on and very like our hairs up and ponytails and everyone's like decked out to the nine, yeah. which Wearing, was cool. Yeah. A lot we of jewelry, it. all it's this. A, because or it's interesting, Nikki, because you were saying earlier that being a mom and stuff, you miss, like, the sexy. Yeah. So did the sexy Nikki come out with WWE? We, you know, for me, I always, like, had it there. Like, I would actually always get in trouble when I was younger for wearing spaghetti straps. Like, the principal mm -hmm. always had me in their office handing me T-shirts. Yeah. And I think I was just a very sexy tomboy, but I think I was just very confident. Like, yeah. I didn't care, like, oh, I need to, you know, bleach my mustache. And, like, people don't like it. I, I never cared about things. Isn't it funny that we used to bleach it? Why weren't we removing it? I tell it? my mom. I go, on, my mom, sister, on my tan skin. <laughs> and I then get a white mustache. I'm like, I this literally shows the other more. Because my mom told my sister, like, bleach it and I was like wow we used to bleach it yeah we're like we why so wouldn't we remove up. it why were yeah and do the like permanent and I know then they didn't have anything for like darker skin but like that's what I told mom at least like take get us to waxing person every week <laughs> oh like, mom then would take us sometimes to the nail salons to get like our eyebrows everything oh, done and we come out I with like rashes and like different shaped eyebrows I was like, this I'll stuff never is not working for me. Forget the first time she ha had me go do a bikini wax because we were going to a pool party. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I had you? pubic hair in fourth grade. So like Well, you're you're saying you're hairy, both oh, of you. Yeah, Mexican yeah. Italian. But you know what's weird? We're hairy oh. in certain spots. Yeah. Some spots we wouldn't grow any hair. Yeah. And then some spots, it's like that's where the hair Which went. Which is true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what were we in high school? I think I got my first bikini wax. Maybe it was eighth grade or high school. And never again it was torture it was torture when she pulled the tweezers out <laughs> after waxing oh my god i was like what am i doing well you would be good candidates for like a laser which we yeah, love which we, we do love. like we use laser away <laughs> yeah. like it's the best <laughs> like it's your job <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Um, well, I wanted to ask you also because you're turning 40 in November. Yeah. Which like, oh my God, you right. look amazing. Oh, thank you. And also you hear about 40 today. It seems to be the, all the rage. Oh, the rage. Oh, all the, all the, everyone's lit. I feel like it gets better. Yes. After 40. We were even with Kelly Ripa yesterday. We we're at Live with Kelly and she told us that like the 40s were her favorite. It's been her, her favorite, favorite decade, decade ever. Mm. And my mom and her friends, but like, I get it. I think as women, we're so comfortable with who we are that we just like voice stuff. Brie and I have been that way for a while. So we've always used our voices. And yeah, you like, just don't give a shit when you turn 40. Like, whatever. But I, I start to get that feeling like you don't give a shit. You start to think like, you know what, with my group, like if you're not in it for like the things I like, bye. I'm going to be selfish at times or I'm going to do the things I want or I don't know. And I think maybe for yeah. some people too, our kids aren't older, but I think maybe for others, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited for it. Yeah. And I think too, it's like you hustled so much in your twenties and your thirties. And I feel like you spent all your twenties making mistakes and learning. And then you spend your thirties, like kind of figuring out exactly where you fit in and who yeah. you ca you are and you, be mm -hmm. you end up knowing who you are. Yeah. So I feel like forties, it's like you actually get to start living without thinking. Yeah. And a part of me, like I look in the mirror and I'm like, I want to be a beautiful 40 year old. I don't want to be like a 40 year old trying to be 25. Like I'm over those days. Yeah. Like, I don't need to look like a 25 year old or even a 35 year old. Right. I want to be like a beautiful 40 year old. Yeah, just, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's a different feeling. It is true. Even when I'm 35, so like a little yeah. younger sorry yeah. no, I'm no. Um, 35 was a good year it was a good yeah? year. yeah okay well even when I turned 30 and then it was like turning 30 okay. I always said like what you're saying about 40 and I feel like that's probably just gets even maximized every year like you know yourself better yeah. you right. listen to yourself more you do what you want to do yeah you don't think as much about other people like so it just it's I always say like aging is good guys it's great like look at all these beautiful women out there killing it you know, right, and right. I feel like the, do you feel like the media too, like is more embracing yes. for women sure. getting older today? Yeah. Like I love, um, and just like that, like yeah. I love what they're doing and like the messaging of like aging, like life isn't over. Like, right. and guess what? The time is still ticking. Life's going on. So if you want to waste it living in the past and your youth, like go have fun, but there's so much life to live. And I'm so happy people are finally embracing like wrinkles and aging because I always used to hate, like, with men, they'd be like, look at how great he's aging. I know. And look I, at him. And it's still hard. It's so embedded yes. in us that I still do it. I'll be like, Steve Carell is aging yeah. like fine wine. It's like, how are we always saying that about dudes? Right. Totally. Yeah. My mom just sent us a screenshot of the doctor from Grey's Anatomy. What's his name? Which one? From oh, the 80s yeah. Movies. I see. I posted him. Patrick Dempsey. Okay, he yeah. does look great, though. He does. He does. My mom, like, sent us and goes, how amazing is he aging? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but where are the other women? Where are the women? Yeah. Well, J Lo, I, Gwen Stefani. I'm always like, and they're wow. yeah. in the group text. J Lo, Gwen Stefani. I mean, yes, Cher. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. There's so many. So Sharon many. Stone. Yeah, Diane Keaton. Jones. Let's just name women. Women, that are women. Yeah. right? <laughs> Fucking so yeah. True. But you know what it is? It's men. It's when you see them with their white hair or the salt and pepper. Yeah. You think to yourself like, oh, I wonder what that'd be like on a woman, I guess. And so we see it on men. And we're like, oh, he looks great yeah. at his age. I don't know. And then we see it's, a woman with like gray hair or white hair, and we're like, why isn't like, she dying yeah. it? Right. Right. So we I think we still that. have to get over that hump. We have to get over that hump. We do for sure. Um, so you're both moms. Yeah. Well, you've been a mom for, for a little bit longer Six years for six years. And you're both, by the way, I gave birth, um, like right when you guys did. Oh, and really? I remember it was oh, like exciting. Way. I was like, Oh my God, we, I think I was August 5th. What about you? August oh, yeah. 1st. First and then July 31st. Yeah. So oh, right around the goodness. corner, it was a fun week. I feel like a lot of people kind of gave birth and I remember shouting yeah. you both out too, saying like, Oh, it's oh, so exciting. I give gosh. birth at the same time. Thank you. Um, so how's having two, three-year-old boys? Oh, Whew. the best. It's the best, <laughs> it's but it's crazy. a lot of work. I mean, the boy energy is outrageous, but <laughs> I don't know if, because I've always been kind of needy for love my entire life. And you're getting it. I'm getting it. I know. And my I'm God. obsessed Great. with it. Like it is, I feel bad at times for Artem, my husband, because like, <laughs> Mateo truly is like the only love I ever needed. Cause yeah, it it's like, I don't me. need you anymore. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, for sex, for sure. Cause I love his <laughs> orgasms, but other than you that, love his orgasms, I mean, like the I orgasms, the orgasms, orgasms you give he gives me. And I like his orgasms too. I like them both. Cause then I know I pleased him. So yeah, mm -hmm. I like both orgasms, but 
the love that Mateo gives me, it I've just have never felt like so fulfilled. Like, you know, and they always say, like, work on filling your cup. Like, you know, and the, your therapist <laughs> yeah. will tell you that. He just it's does fall. it. Yeah. yeah. He kisses me, loves me, says I mommy, know. and it just fills right I up. know. Well, I think too, being a mom, it, but it's exhausting. <laughs> I think at times we search for so much purpose in life. And I think when you become a mother, it's that natural purpose you feel like you're kind of like, fuck it. I can like get fired from a job or whatever. But like every morning I wake up and I'm a mother to these yeah. kids. And like, I just feel like every morning I wake up and I have no idea what they're going to throw at me. It's always like unexpected. Yeah. Who's going to have a good day? Who's going to have a bad day? But I feel like I always have something to do every day. Yeah. Like yeah. days aren't boring when you're Yeah. Wrong. And they keep you like focused and yeah. focusing on things that matter. Like what what matter? Right. Like, this totally. Matters. And, and like when your kids like you see the growth in them when they're just learning, you're like, wow. Like it's I don't know. You kind of pat yourself on the well, back. You're like, I'm doing that. Yeah. And I feel like because we're in a way older moms, but I think it's so worth waiting for because I've lived the life. Like, we've been around the world. We've partied. We've done all the things and had fun. So I don't ever feel like I'm missing out. Yeah. So I really ever. cherish Right, you're not having moment. FOMO now. Yeah, I yeah. don't ever have FOMO. Zero FOMO. That's Anything such I a good at, point, though, yeah, in waiting. I look waiting. at people, and I'm like, ooh, like, that's Right, if you're 25 and having a kid, great. But you might be like, oh, my friends are going out. Where I'm like, great, I have an excuse. By the way, I wanted to have a baby to have an excuse not to go out. Yes, right? <laughs> which is a great <laughs> one. No one can say anything yeah to you. so true it really sorry works. can't get a sitter i can't yeah. sorry yeah. um by the way because brie was a mom you know she had she had birdie birdie She's, six yeah. yeah so were you like when she had her did you have kind of not fomo but oh yeah did you feel like she was kind of abandoning you or how did you feel back then it, well you know it was what I feel bad and Brie was amazing at, I think maybe because she had Birdie a little younger. Well, I mean, little, I was 33. But 34. it feels like now younger. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I was 40. I'm like, that was when so you were young. a baby, when yeah. you were a child mom. Um, I just, like, we were in the thick of Total Divas and Total Bellas. So I'm like, come on, Brie, keep up. And yeah. she did with Bird. But I guess Birdie, what was amazing, and Birdie was such a great baby. Birdie just did everything with Brie and I. So we became Three's company, and I loved it. Birdie gave me love that was, like, so amazing. Huh? She was so good to me, and, like, it then started to make me really want to be a mom. And oh. at that point in my life, I was about to give that up and, you know, make the decision that I'm fine without it. But the love Birdie gave me and the bond Birdie and I had. You wanted it. I go, I have to have this. And Brie would tell me, she goes, what you have with Birdie is so strong. And she was so I can't even explain to you what it is with your own child. And I go, nothing gets greater than this. Yeah. yeah. It can't because Bird and I were peas in a pod and we still are. But now I get it. I know. I mean, I you just crazy. can't explain it. But yeah. Yeah. And what's, Brie hung in there. What's Fuck. what does it feel different about having a boy now? So Birdie <laughs> was very calm, yeah, quiet, stayed right next to me, right? Like would never leave my side. And we could sit down and I could just put some toys in front of her. She'd be lost in that for hours. Buddy, it's like, mm. buddy, no, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. buddy, there's cars. There's a, I, a, con yeah. I feel like I'm constantly almost yelling yeah. all the time and like scared because he's just a <laughs> runner and he's fast. No, it's boys. Yeah. I and know. like. People will see me, and sometimes you just see me stay in line holding a shirt, and then you can Hers just see my is, face. Like, like and he's like great. still like. Oh, he's wilder than he's wild. Mateo. Like, the he's top wild. Top He'll be wild. standing on my counter, and he's like, "Mama, mama," <laughs> and I walk in, and I'll just turn around and walk out, and I'm like, "You know, you're not allowed <laughs> to be on the counter," and I just. But even tell her about like when um, you were pregnant. Well, so when I was I, pregnant, he constantly kicked. Like oh we, God, I've so never seen. It was okay. Like, so, so fast. all oh, the time. Really? And okay, then you guys have this. How he would probably Noah wrestles. By the way, maybe uh, I should talk to WWE. Too. Like, yeah, honestly, yeah. they he should literally, be tag team. He comes to people at the park, and I'm like, you can't body slam people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know where he learned it. I'm like, maybe YouTube like <laughs> yeah. skip too much. You know, yeah. like <laughs> what are we watching? <laughs> yeah, that he but I agree things. with you. My son is a natural born wrestler. Like he'll do certain stuff. And Brian and I are like, where did he learn he, like, this? Runs to like up to dads at the park and like heads butts them oh, in the yeah. nuts. And, yes. like, Wait, how do they play between them, Buddy and Mateo? So they were like brothers for a while. Yeah. Where it would be nice. The next, you know, it's a wrestling match. Yeah. Um, but we just were talking about this maybe the last two or three weeks. Yeah. All of a sudden, no one's crying anymore during playtime. Like, with them playing right. together. Like, they play really good. Now, Buddy is a bull in a china shop. So, you know, you have to be gentle, bud. Yeah. Gentle. Mateo's he doesn't understand his strength. Gentler. Yeah, very gentle. 
Yeah. He's, so he, um, yeah. But he, Mateo, very, you can't mess with. But like, no, he Mateo, stands up for himself. Yeah, he does stand up for himself. Well, he, he's he'll good. let things happen for a bit. And then he does this pinch. He goes, yeah. And then he'll and let he, you know. Like, him, like, he gets his you anger know, out. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, get out of his space. And, <laughs> and, let you know. and it's like so cute because he's not, um, like, he's not vocal. Like, Buddy will come up and go, ah. Yeah. And like, he does this my whole son dinosaur is thing. Crazy boy. And no, oh my Mateo God. Mateo does not do any it, of this that. This is making me feel so much better than Noah was like eating my phone and earlier. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, yeah. Come, That's come he was bed. getting out his anger out. I wasn't oh, yeah. listening to him for two seconds. Oh, Bud will go, ah. <laughs> and just let you like he just and then he'll want to hit or something. So I've been teaching him like the mad dance, like just dance it out. <laughs> and like so it's so different than having a girl. Yeah, Birdie oh. is so calm. She would come with you and just yeah. chill. I can't when I look just because I've been through both with her. <laughs> it's mind blowing. And Birdie will different. sit there. I mean, Birdie's six going on twenty, and she'll be like, "How do you do it?" <laughs> and I'm always like, "I don't know." Wait, does she like and, babysit though? Because not not but well, a lot of well, times. Girls take yeah. that role. Like no, she is girls. like, forget about oh, it. Oh, she's all over it. She like seriously will look at Buddy and like walk to her room and lock the door. She's like, I can't <laughs> deal with them right now. She told me the other day, she was, you know why I'm so cute? Like why? She was, <laughs> because I'm so kind. Do you know why Buddy is not? Because he is not kind. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, says she like tell me. Stuff. Wait, she so Brie, stuff. how did it happen? Because with you, you met Artem and you said you wanted a baby and he was yeah. on the same page. Yeah. And then, so how did it happen that both of you had a baby at the same time? Oh. Zero idea. <laughs> By the way. Don't you lie to me, zero no, idea. Yeah. They both were accidents. Like, I had no idea I was pregnant. They and tried then for how long? And then we you tried, kind of We stuck. tried almost a year. And then I couldn't get pregnant. And then Brian and I kind of were like, you know what? We're really good with one kid. Like really? we, it, it's easy in our lives. We both have crazy schedules, and we're like, that's probably why we're not pregnant. Where we thought that was a sign. Like you left it up to yeah the gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he and I were just like, that was it. We like were set with one kid, and I, I do remember the night that I do think it happened. Hmm. So oh, what happened that night? Well, I just in Sedona. I think we didn't care, and I think I, I wasn't ovulating. At least I thought I wasn't. Yeah. Um. So I was kind of just like we we're like well, whatever. Like we weren't safe. Yeah. You know, he didn't pull out. Yeah. So, which I was like. This I love how Nikki's like, orgasms, and you're like. Yeah, trying to be like yeah, nice yeah, about it. I'm yeah, like yeah. trying to think of the scientific way to say yeah. it. Um, pull out. I'm sure that's what the scientists say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be some big word I wouldn't be able to pronounce. Yeah. But um, I remember when she got engaged, I was feeling a little off, and I was super bitchy. I know. You want to say it. Oh, she wasn't happy for you? No, not happy for her. I, oh. I could not stop being grumpy on the strip. Like, my body was going through something. And I couldn't tell, was I dehydrated? I was, my mom was and I, I were talking shit behind her back. We're like, what is her problem? She was so bitchy about every little thing. And, and I, I could tell like, I wasn't feeling good. So, but I just couldn't tell if it was, like, time change. I don't know. I got on the plane back to America. And I just remember I sat down and I looked at my mom and go, oh, this plane sounds like shit. And my mom goes, and I go, what? She goes... The grumpiness now things smell bad and I go oh. I go mom am I pregnant and she goes and I was like no way I was like trying to think and I so when I went back home took a test and sure enough were and you it, happy I was oh, really yeah, happy she was super happy I was it's what I wanted yeah and it just and I felt like I had to accept that I just maybe couldn't get pregnant again so that just felt like a miracle so, Did you try other ways or that whole year you no. were just trying? You didn't get I into I never had like, the patience for that. Yeah. I, I saw like so many of my friends go through that journey and I was like, oh, God. You were kind of like, if it's not happening this way. But so then did you conceive so, after her? No. no. So what was crazy it's, is right before we went to <laughs> France and it's even on total Bellas, divas or Bellas. I can't remember. I literally go to the doctor oh, yeah. and she tells me that I have PCOS and she goes, do you know you have no estrogen in your body? And I'm like, the cameras are rolling. And I'm like, I don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm like- Oh my gosh. She goes, so we need a book, but you need to freeze your eggs because you're not going to be able to get pregnant on your own. And I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. So we go to France and like, I'm like, well, I guess I can't get pregnant on my own. So I'm like, Artem, like <laughs> twice, not protected. I won't use Bree's term, but like, Wait, what, what, what were you going through though? Then when you were told that you can't, did you accept? Um, what was it? It was something I felt hormonal or why did I go get checked? Well, and I think too, you're like, you know what? After I get engaged, let's freeze my eggs. Like you were going to go through that whole process. Oh, well, yeah. But well, no, I didn't know I was getting engaged. No, I mean, 
You're right. Oh, so he no, proposed on the trip that you were on the beyond. trip. Yeah. yeah. So it what it was like right before I we went on this trip. And Artem and I had only been dating 11 months, but something I felt off. So I went and got testing done, and then all this stuff came out. Like you know. Oh yeah, you all did, these things. Because yeah. remember, I was feeling not well. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have PCOS. Like this makes a lot of sense, and whatever, whatever. And then we go on this trip. We have wild sex. He proposes. I come back. Brie tells me she's pregnant. I'm like, oh my gosh, I must be feeling your symptoms because I'm feeling so nauseous and like all these she things. Felt, yeah, she thought it was just like twin symptoms. So I'm thinking pain. it's twin stuff. And then um, it got worse like two days later. Was it just two days? Was it? Yeah. Because I was third in hot day yoga you took and the... I'm like, I'm about to vomit everywhere. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't even drink. I'm like, do I still have a hangover from France? Like, I'm just thinking <laughs> of all these things of why I feel so shitty. Yeah. So. I'm driving home and I remember thinking like, I mean, I can't be pregnant. They told me I have no estrogen in my body. I have to freeze my eggs. I'm like, there's no way. But I do know that I just let, you know, my now fiance, like we had, you know. Not pull out. Nights, right. Yeah. Exactly, not pull out mm -hmm. twice. <laughs> and I'm like, but. So I go get a test and it says positive. That I'm by myself. Wild. Yeah. Crazy. I had to take another one. It says positive again. So I'm like, oh my gosh, who do I tell first? Brie or Artem? I did do Artem. You did. <laughs> Even though I was about to go to her first. But I told Artem. And I'm happy I, you didn't because I know. Artem would never have let you. No. No. And, but I, my, like everything dropped just because Artem and I were still so fresh. <laughs> and I just was thinking of what the world was. And I shouldn't have thought that, but my immediate thought because everyone was already so hard on me at that time. They were. Because I had what? Been broken up in my serious relationship at that point. Was it a year and a half? Two years? Yeah year and a half two years so all like, of that kind of happened fast oh you mean to be engaged people would think to that be that's engaged. fast and then now yeah. pregnant and then now and they would probably think that he proposed was, because exactly. you're pregnant exactly like all this was going all through the, my head yeah. and i'm like just remember sitting before you get excited yeah about the baby i remember just sitting on the toilet like um like just feeling like wet i just so many emotions <laughs> But also happy, but it more of like what, like, I shocked. almost felt protected. I was very shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. Because then, and then I was like, what did that test say? Like that doctor, yeah. what the heck? Like, yeah. how do you tell someone? But anyways, that's a whole other thing. Um, so then I tell her and then <laughs> she was like, could not believe it. Were, were you happy? There were was so much going on in her life at the time. That I think I was like her. My first reaction was like, fuck. Like, why are about was to hit going a shit on, I just think there was, she had to deal with so many headlines. And then she just dealt with so much uncertainty. Mm. She knew everything was moving fast and that was scaring her. Look, at the end of the day, it's hard when you're a reality star. And then for six years, you share that life with your partner, right? Yeah. And, and then four weeks away from the wedding, I leave and it's like I became and I think we're actually seeing this with Joe Jonas and Sophie. Yeah. Is the woman always gets painted as the villain. Yeah. It's just they walk outside they and they smile. You as the villain then? I just everything was you so negative him. with me. Really? And then dating Artem. I think it was how long after? I can't remember. Maybe it was a, a year. while. It was I'm a gonna, while. It's like gonna, a year. Hold I think. up. Let me tell you. Okay. Yeah. So you did uh Dancing with the Stars in 2017 with yeah. Artem. And then everyone was shocked when you, when you split with John. Yeah. But you only got with Artem. He was in a year. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. And you split with John in twenty seventeen. Yeah. So because I remember I didn't see Artem for like a year. He was doing right. his tours, spring season. They were doing like a junior season. Like that guy was always busy. And you just to to to, to clarify, you were gonna marry John. Yeah. But then he didn't. He was going to have kids because he wanted kids, but he didn't really want kids. And, and that knew. takes a lot of strength, too, especially what you were For saying, sure. like, loving the... Like, the easiest thing is to break up with someone that you're, yeah, you don't right. love. You don't like. But you had to break off something that the public and everything like that, that yeah. takes a lot of strength. Yeah, thank you. And it made it so why Brie wasn't like the happiest when that happened is she knew like what I you're struggled gonna have to deal for a with. few years with that decision. Like was that right? Like, I still care about this I person. Like, I didn't feel like she was fully healed. Yeah. And I was like, oof, like, you got to take time to heal instead of just like, ooh, this is all happening And Artem fast. and I had amazing communication. I got to be honest with him about everything. And that very... was the best feeling ever. And then someone who actually and was he there for me and understood. Like, the whole time he was always like, 
the first time we had talked since Dancing with the Stars was my breakup. And he had reached out to me, seeing all the headlines. He goes, hey, I just want to know, are you okay? And then I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, hey. Is yeah. that how you got together from That's that text? That's how we started talking again from that text. Did people think that there was there was oh overlap? Oh, gosh, yes. That's why I was so protective of Artem for so long because then— You didn't want people to think that he did anything like that. They harmful. had an affair. She yeah. left him for him yeah. and the whole thing because it was so untrue. And I also told Artem, I go, I don't even want you to have what— that credit like that's because that was nothing of it like no <laughs> it wasn't you babe it like wasn't you yeah like I and it's funny how people will take like your empowerment or your strength and your bravery and automatically like throw it on like someone else yeah like no this was all me for me and what I felt and I did the work and um but yeah I just I was so protective of him in the beginning because then that's what started to come. So when I had my, when I got pregnant, I just knew like, great, my Dancing with the Stars partner, who was like two years ago, I just got engaged and I'm having his baby. Like, what is this going to say? Like, what did people know at that point? What did the world we know? We were dating. The, dating. So yeah. you, did you announce the engagement and then wait and then the pregnancy? Yeah. Uh, did you? Yeah. I feel like, yeah, you announced the engagement and pregnancy together. Yeah. And I the, oh the pregnancy and engagement like, yeah. together? together no no was it nope. separate oh. I oh, literally true. announced the engagement I got in trouble for it because I was supposed to wait remember for the e show oh yeah but I didn't want anyone to know yet I was pregnant and it was New Year's Eve I just posted the photo mm -hmm. from France I just dropped it I feel bad I didn't tell PR I didn't tell anyone I just dropped it knowing like I can't deal with the double I just gotta let this be out first I yeah. have the flu right now. I'm just going to now turn my phone off and I'm going to just be out of commission for 14 days and let the world talk and save my mental health in Did that way. Did you feel like you had to tell your ex about it I told first, him first before, before you posted? I told him about my engagement and my prank. He was the first call after her and my mom. John was like my next. I wanted him to know just before anything. And was he and cool with it? Yeah. And was Artem cool that you felt the need to call him? Yeah. He, really? He under actually he understood it. Like he That's cool. He goes, I totally get it. Like do what you have wow. to do. And um I That's like, a, not a lot of guys would no. be like that. That's no. really They actually, yeah, they yeah. He I mean, for long, he was so supportive. So supportive. Like he's amazing. And both, you know, because John too, like, what do you say or do like he's yeah. just you know they were very supportive that's the but you found your fairy tale like yeah. the love of your life yeah a baby mm -hmm. and it all happened so fast sometimes things like happen like that honestly like I believe in all that stuff mm -hmm. and um I believe that sometimes God brings people into your life and when I look back at Artem and I had inc incredible chemistry and everyone would talk about it and like I sometimes feel like God put me on that path. Cause even Artem said, he goes, I don't think I was supposed to get you. Like he goes, I was so shocked when you were the person I was supposed to get. Cause at that time I just got the people who were maybe they knew were going to be kicked off week one or week two or week three. Oh, like he wasn't like one of the top. He wasn't supposed to uh... pair up. And I was supposed to do it like a year before, like when I broke my neck and I was coming back, I was actually supposed to do it with Derek. And then I bailed last minute because an opportunity came up to wrestle at SummerSlam. And I was like, I'm going back in the ring. And so I went and did it instead of dancing that season. So when I look at how it all worked, it yeah. is crazy what, what I believe in is like my angels and God. And they put him in my life for a reason. And they put me on this path. And I'm exactly where I'm meant to be because I feel it. I'm so happy. I'm and so happy like, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys double date? Look, Daniel and Artem, do they vibe? They do, especially now that Artem's like real into working out and eating clean. I feel like. Oh, yeah. Um, Wait, yeah. which one is a vegan? So my husband. Oh, he, you're, he not, now, a, you're like, not? No, I'm not a mm. vegan. But she he was he now, for a long time. Yeah. I literally, for a long time, I went vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, and now I'll like eat some chicken and turkey. Yeah. But that's as far as I go in the meat world. But, um, and my husband, um, he'll bring in some fish at times, but he tries to strictly be vegan now. But now they, I feel like they just yeah. are like they started vibing. I start, mean. Finally, I mean, and they always get along, but their schedules are just so different. 
And I and then it's funny when one talks about wrestling, one talks about ballroom dancing, like <laughs> yeah, like that's actually that's like the opposite on the freaking yeah. spectrum. Like yeah. in our relationship, I'm the fighter, he's the lover. Like it's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever get the itch though, like to wrestle again or get back in the ring for sure? Oh my yeah, gosh. every day, <laughs> especially because you know my husband's at AEW now. But I'm still surrounded a lot by wrestling because he and I, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. He's fully in it. And, you know, he just had an incredible match this Sunday after big pay-per-view all out. And I just, you know, I watch everything. And I, when I see the women wrestle and all that, I always am like, oh. You get fired up. I know. I'm Wait, like, is AW I'm, like more hardcore than W? Oh, AW is for sure more yeah. hardcore. They have less rules, I would say. There are a lot of bleed and hit each would other with Would you do objects. a more hardcore thing? I, I would. I for sure would. I definitely have it in me. Breathe. But I feel like it's not over for you guys. I don't know why. I feel like we want one last run. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we especially like when our sons are a little older and they could sit and watch mommy, like their mommies kick ass. And if my surgeon allows me to, um, but because of her neck, yeah, not her neck, not her, not yeah. her boobs. Not your boobs. Oh, no. That's a good clarification. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I'll pop those. But you both have out. boobs. I'm confused. I now. just got these. Oh, December. Shush. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because I was told that you have the boobs, the and I was like, I'm they both fuck. have boobs. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand. No, we both. I finally. And did. I thought you might have boobs to differentiate. No, I was. It was like what twenty eight, and I felt like the girls just left me one day, and I was like, you know what? And this is when I took eleven months off of w, WWE the first time. I was like, I'm gonna go get some boobs, and then I fell in love. Like, <laughs> did oh, you yeah. not want them? Then were you like, I didn't up until about a year ago. Um, I I never felt the desire, and then I kind of just was like. You know, I like certain outfits and you always hated the way it looked. Yeah. I really just started, I started getting flatter and flatter and just like, I'm like, you know what? Like, what am I, what, let's just do this. I will she say I canceled them as you can see. Yeah. I canceled she's, my appointment I mean, though, two or three times. They some you. Yeah, yeah. They do. Thank you. But I did cancel my appointment a couple of times cause I would get anxiety. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not supposed to. Do yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, but it's been the best thing. And you did it after baby. Yeah. Oh Yeah. I that's did it December. A, that's a good good time to do it. Yeah, I probably with the wild boy maybe should have waited. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. One gets punctured. He, like, I mean, he knew I like was bandaged up and thought like I'm gonna jump on mommy. Oh it's my god. Just was funny. Thing. I had to get mine redone because they were like 11 years in, mm. 11 or 12, right? Something. So we did it day apart. My mom <laughs> of was like, did. of yeah. course, right? Yeah. And. Um, M Mateo like jumped straight on it and then it busted the because I did a lift too uh -huh. and I went smaller oh man I'm a little bummed I went smaller I thought it was gonna be like great like but I missed my big old yeah one. yeah well you wanted to be more chic I did that's what I said I go I want things to <laughs> it like, is. feel better but yeah, I kind of yeah. miss the girls but I got a crazy infection because when he jumped on me the bottom part like kind of oh split. my god I had, like a hole in my boob and they had to go Christmas Eve. Well, I'm sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I don't feel good. And Arm's like, what? I go, um, I'm burning up. All of a sudden, I got hit 104-degree fever within minutes. And, and it's because of like, Mateo jumping on your boob? It, like, kind of, like, started to, like, yeah. Oh, my God. Because it was, like, 24 hours outside of surgery. I have, like, cat reflex, so I, like, chucked a pillow, like, in the air. At the same time, he was flying. I'm like, <laughs> Like threw them Next off. Time I was you like, need, like, you need to, a rehabilitation center away from honestly, the, the kids after. Her and I surgery. both said that. We were like, what were, what you, were you thinking? <laughs> I know. No legit. And I was like picking them up because I was like, I can't let him be affected because I got yeah. new boobs. And how do you, <laughs> do they ask? They don't notice. Oh, no. my, my daughter. Oh, oh your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we still will shower together and stuff. Yeah. She was like, well, she asked me, she goes, are you breastfeeding? No. <laughs> And I go, no, I'm not breastfeeding. She's like, well, your boobs are big. And I was like, well, mommy did some stuff to make them bigger, you know, to lift them. Yeah. But she didn't, so I didn't say an implant funny. or anything. Yeah. yeah. She thought it was like back breastfeeding. <laughs> Wait, so funny. now the Garcia twins, even though they might wrestle yeah. down the line, right now you're doing so much hosting and yes. so much cool shit. Let's talk about this show coming up, Twin Love. Oh, yeah. They were hosting so together. What a wild concept. Yes. So, Correct me if I'm wrong. Sets of twins, they separate them. They go into separate houses and they bring other sets of twins separate. So it's like to see if a twin will fall in love with the same twin yes. as their twin in the other house. Yeah. Well, and what so is, it's a Brie and Nikki house. Oh, they're called was, Brie and Nikki. Yeah. So we have our own houses. 
And what was though amazing is when they would walk up together and they're like fired up that they're going to do this whole dating thing together, right? So they don't even know they're going to be separated. Oh. So Brie and I are chatting with them. We're getting them fired up. And then we're like, well, so we have some news. And then we laid on them that, you know, this twin's going to my house. This one's going in. And they all would burst into tears. Even to see sad. how the men would get, look, it gives me the chills. Because we we know it. Like, it's hard to do things alone. When you're an identical twin and spent your life together, it's hard to go do things alone at times. And so they would be so upset. But that was, like, part of the experiment. But then what I loved is the ones that made it to the end, we put them all back into one house to be like, oh, now you found love. Let's see if your twin likes it. Wow. Right? It and, was so And I feel good. like, too, the one thing that I really, gosh, felt from all of them is they're all, like, they're all people who just are doing well in life. Yeah. They have their head on straight. It's a great cast. But because they're so close with their twin, their relationships never work out because they have this built-in best friend, the soulmate already. So their relationships have failed because their other person was like, you're too close with your twin. Like, I feel like you don't give me enough time. And you've experienced so they want, that in your oh, life yeah. too? Yeah. So these twins wanted to come to date other twins so they could date people who understood the twin relationship, which was actually really cute to see in a way because they all felt refreshed. They're like, wow, like you, you, you'll love the fact that our twins will always be together and like we can go on double dates and weird shit. We gotta have a next venture for you guys. Ready? Yes. A twin only dating app. Oh yes. Um, yeah. So Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so is it was it also to see if I mean there's so many elements at play, but was it also to see if the twin will fall in love yes. with the twin? Yes. And, and there's some weird stuff. I it's can't even so explain. It's so exciting. Like, wait, that when was does our this come favorite. out? Does it have a date? Or It'll be date? later this year. They're later announcing it soon. Okay. But that's um, really exciting. Yes. And that's the the experiment part to see do twins fall for the same that was so fun right to watch. well oh my gosh because they all were twins there's a lot of confidence which i really loved like people said what they felt yeah, and they then really put their the ones that were confident when we were interviewing them and, and then really all separated sudden, yeah. and they go in the house by themselves how much they got quiet or are you guys the same way or like when you do because you've been doing stuff on your own a little bit yeah, yeah. We're not, no. No. We're very, and we did sometimes wrestling by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And like when I went to go do the real dirty dancing, it was actually fun to do something on my own. And like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like when and you do yeah, it's yeah. like fun when we do it step on our the own. Best. Blake, Shelton, and Carson Daly are so amazing to work with. Yeah. Like they're truly the greatest bromance ever. And seeing even Blake and Gwen, they're so I was going to ask cute. and Gwen. Gwen's. Like a dream. a dream. A dream. I mean, she was, she's just such an icon. And I mean, all of us probably were obsessed with her, right, growing up. And so getting to be with her, she's just so cool and down to earth. Yeah. And so hot. And are you happy for each other? Like when you get a gig, you get, oh. yeah. do you ever Always. go for the same things? What did we? I don't think we have. Yeah. Probably I your teams not, like yeah. wouldn't do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like now what, what's great is if we're not working together, we really embrace where we're different and the things we enjoy because we are very different. And so I feel like you'll really start to see us do things that are more who we are individually. Yeah. Wait, speaking of dating twins, did you ever date twins? Yes. Well, kind of. Yeah. Huh? You well, did. I dated a twin and then she started making out with the brother and I was like, wait okay, a second. It did wait a second. We can't be the weird twins so that are that all making out. Do you think that's weird a little bit then? It was weird for me because they were identical. They are still identical. That is that they're yeah. crazy identical. They were such gorgeous soccer players growing up. So I always had a crush on Andrew the goalie. And Bree knew that. And then when we got into college, she started dating the twin. But then I finally had my opportunity to make out what the guy I had a crush on was younger. So like, am I gonna say no to that? <laughs> no. Like, no. So and then he and I would chat and stuff. And then it just nothing worked out. We we're we we're just in such different places in our life. He was playing pro soccer. Was I in the WWE at that time? I think in the beginning yeah. years. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Did oh, you no, ever I play wasn't. tricks no, on right. like boyfriends? So not boyfriends, but definitely like guys that we'd meet for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like we had We fun. broke up with boyfriends like in middle school. Like oh, yeah. one. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like you do it you know. for her and you yeah. do it for yeah. her. Oh, that's cute. We did that. We did definitely. Um, that. <laughs> so just a couple things before you go, just to see 
how different you are. Oh my God. I had so much to talk to you guys about. Look how many oh, are wow, going. I know, that. but it's almost it. an hour. What can I do? <laughs> okay. First of all, and you have your wine, Bonita. Yeah. yeah bonita, 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 Bonita. Bonita, Bonita, bonita mm-hmm. which is also like Latin, Latin, yes. Latin so, vibes. Mm-hmm. And you're living in Napa. So you're committed to this like wine lifestyle. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, we live it like hands on. We just signed a lease on a new tasting room. Yeah. Oh my God. Speakeasy vibes. It's a speakeasy we, tasting room. Wine was always a passion. I mean, when we drink a shitload of it and have since we've been young mm-hmm. as 21. No, but like we're <laughs> literally the girls when I would shoulder tap like seven. Do people know, do you need to no. explain what shoulder yes, tapping please. is? Oh, sorry. So back in the day we called it shoulder tap, but before someone walked into seven 11 or circle K you would sh- tap them on the shoulder and be like, Hey, can you go buy me some alcohol? And give oh, you like a okay, okay. $20 tip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I would get, I would always ask for like two buck checks. Like, Hey, that two bottle, do, two dollar bottle that was so hard to say Charles Wine. Schwab yeah can I get that so I would bring that to the parties like the college parties and everyone would be drinking beer and they'd be like ew like you're drinking like, red wine you I drink like cheap it. wine cheap I remember when I started making money in WWE and it wasn't a lot but I bought my first bottle of La Crema and it was like $25 and I'm like Brie I just bought a $25 <laughs> bottle of wine and we were like celebrated so excited like, I got a wine fridge at Target I would put my La Cremas in there we and get I got crema and bar. a wrap yeah from Oregon um but so we always appreciate wine and we come from a farming family we grew up farmer girls our family just did produce and not grapes so when we started to visit wine country and like learn about harvest and crush and all the in-between we were like this is the coolest thing ever. And so we just would visit a lot and we never really thought we could be in it until like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. We realized we met a good friend, Ryan Hill and his family's Hill family estate. And he just was like, you know, if you guys want to be in it now, you don't have to wait till you're 60. Cause we used to have it on our vision boards. We're 60. That's how we're going to retire is on the vineyards, making our own wine. Um, He's like, you could do it now. And we were like, no way. And so he's been our mentor in the business. And We've grown so much. Like we have an Did incredible wine club. Did you move there club. after you started the company? Yeah, we moved there. I mean, Buddy was six. Yeah, six weeks old. So in the pandemic, did you feel like you had to physically live there though to to do it? We we got to a point. I feel like everyone in the pandemic, you kind of stood still. Yeah. You reevaluated your life, what yeah. you want to do, and we're like, we need to be by one of our companies. Yeah, yeah, and we need to be more hands on. And wine was our first love, and yeah. are the one brand we cared the most about. And we're like. So we have to move to Napa Valley for us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? Love oh it. my gosh. Obsessed. You know what I love? It's like, I don't see big buildings, no city life, but you know, San Francisco is an hour away if you need it. Yeah. Um, And the airport, but like, it can be bougie, but like low key and like eco vibes. And yeah. You know, yeah. You're raising your kids you're, country. You're, but you're, you're you know, pointing at Brie. You get it? It's, yeah. it's a, to- it's, Napa is totally a mix of Nikki and Brie together. Oh, for sure. I see you, what you're saying. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, like, we literally will be out in the vineyards or the kids are out in the dirt. And then her and I get dressed up and we go to Restoration Hardware Restaurant. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Totally. And it's like Disneyland for adults. Mm-hmm. So when people come visit, people are really happy. Like, yeah. And that like energy coming to visit flows you is a around. Treat. Yeah. Because yeah. when Brie and I go to Disneyland, we're always like, everyone has smiles on their face. And this is just the greatest place in the world. We love Disneyland. But that's how Napa feels. Like, how it's always good energy. You live? Like, 400 feet. <laughs> Stop. We're those Total. twins. We oh my are. God. We never thought we would be, but we really love life. So, together. just a random question because you do have a brother. Yeah. Right? How did, if you had a sister, I'd feel bad for the sister. Yeah. Because right? sure. he's a boy, probably. D- does he mind? Does he get jealous? He does. He right? does. He'll like make comments like, I'm part of the, the family f- too. Yeah, like, and don't be like, me. Yeah. yeah. Where does he live? Phoenix. So he, mom. okay. Yeah. So they didn't follow you to no. Napa. He's a mama's boy. Like they'll always stay really close. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they have each other. Yeah. Yes. You can, you can. They're, and they're like a duo. Oh, my yeah. Mom's such they're a always young mom, together. But my mom's diehard sports fan. Like that's what she wanted to be was a sports commentator till she got knocked up. <laughs> and so. <laughs> till we ruined it. Till, yeah. I was yeah. like, sorry, mom. But she knows oh, you know what? everything about sports. She didn't pull out. <laughs> she did. Our dad didn't. She didn't pull out. Yeah, I think. Wait, dad and you know what else is Apple interesting to me though? Fall far. Yeah. What about reality? Because you're doing hosting and stuff. Yeah. But like these shows were about you, like Total right. Bellas and stuff. Do you yeah. see yourselves going back to that? We, when we shot um, Nikki Bella says I do the wedding special, and you know, at that point we were like done with reality because of the kids. But when that presented itself, we're like, oh well, we know the work that gets put in for four episodes, like. 
This will be easy. And they were like game for not really showcasing our kids. So we're like, okay, great. Yeah. And the show did so well. And Brie and I also really missed it. We were like, oh my, we missed doing this. This was a lot of fun. We had our same crews from like everyone we worked with, same showrunner. Yeah. And we were like, we could do this as long as our kids can be protected and they'll never be forced to be a part of that life. We can do this. And like, it's not always about our home life. Yeah. We can do it again for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Because we had a lot of fun. We and did it was have fun a lot with fun. Artem. And, you know, we just, we have no filters and we don't like delete things. Like, we know that you have to sometimes show the bad, just, you know, so people can relate. Yeah. Because nothing's perfect. Yeah. Like, and that's probably why you've succeeded so much. Like, where yeah. people see, see like all sides of your lives and everything. Yeah. For totally. sure. Two quick Mary Fuck Kills before you go. So okay. we can see if your twin hood. <laughs> like with tasting guys, you know. Yeah. Okay. Were you usually the same or no? No. no oh, okay. Never. Like never. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Crazy. the first one is Brad Pitt, Joe Jonas, because like he's oh. in the headline. I know we're we're who we're kidding. killing. <laughs> um, and Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, um. So I would fuck Brad Pitt for sure. Yeah. Are you sure you could fuck him for life if you marry him? That's oh wait, I actually, thinking. I would. What is it? Fuck, Mary kill. Yeah. So I'd fuck Machine Gun Kelly. Okay, smart. Mary Brad Pitt, okay. kill Joe Jonas. I actually feel like I'd be the same. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad for Joe, but like nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay. You feel bad for Joe? No, I don't feel bad for him, but I'm, I feel bad that I don't want to fuck him oh, or Mary. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Don't feel bad for that. Yeah, we don't. Not that I want to kill him. He's... He seems like a nice guy, but you know. Not as a late. But I don't know. Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly, I don't know if I really want to fuck him. Well, no, Nikki, I'm glad you said that because. I feel the same way, like, yeah. with, with what's happening. It's sad. Um, okay, Austin Butler, Jacob Elordi, Ryan Reynolds. And not, I don't know, maybe Wait. maybe it was in the back of my mind. Who's Jacob? Yeah. Jacob Elordi, you guys? Yeah, who's that? Dead. Oh, no. No. From Euphoria, the, the tall Australian guy. Oh, okay, I think I'll show you, yeah, show I'll me show a, you a picture. picture and then you can decide. Okay. Okay, ready? I want to fuck them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first? I mean, Ryan Reynolds. Wait, do you know who good. Austin Butler is? Aust oh, yeah. Oh, Austin. Elvis. Yeah. I already know who my thing would be. Okay, this I is would, not him with a mustache. Fuck Austin, Mary Ryan, and then probably kill this guy because I don't know him. <laughs> That's true. Until so you see him. This guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and I I mean, he seems so great. <laughs> he, he's so handsome. Yeah. He's but so I would really sorry, like to Jacob. fuck Austin. And if he could do the whole Elvis thing. He's oh, in yeah. it still, babe. Yeah, he's he hasn't still, left so it I'd anyway. be like, yeah. Okay, and so then, fuck Austin, kill Jacob. And Mary Ryan, for sure. I'm the same. Oh, oh nice. Same. Yeah, same. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah, on. Yeah, You're thank both you. like just so great oh, together and separately. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that means you so as much. are all twins. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs>